So Mark, you mentioned the increasing urbanisation. Um, what effect is this having on agriculture in Asia and irrigation in particular? I think there are two issues. The first is that as people are migrating to the cities, there's less attention focused on maintaining and using irrigation, and labor shortage is sometimes an issue. The second issue is that the types of people moving to the cities uh, is not a necessarily a cross-section of the population. So in some cases, we're getting a feminization of, of agriculture and of irrigation. In some places, the farmers remaining tend to be very old or very young. It depends by location, but, but there's definite changes taking place. And Aditi, what, what implications do these changes have for the success of irrigation systems, the existing systems and also new uh, enterprises that are coming along? Um, uh, something very interesting has been happening in most of Asia, particularly in, in South Asia, with the more, uh, for one, farmers have more exit options. Unlike the past, they do not solely depend on agriculture, so that gives them, uh, for example, someone in the family migrates and then remits some money back home, and that gives them amount of capital to invest in agriculture. And what has been happening is also because of the poor performance of these uh, surface irrigation publicly owned schemes, there has been a lot of um, uh, individual investment by the farmers uh, in the form of groundwater pumps or, or pumping from other sources. So, uh, so the main change is less reliance on centralized public irrigation schemes and, uh, and moving away from those towards individualistic, what is called often atomistic irrigation. And the ways to manage to these are somewhat, uh, have hugely different implications. So uh, are you saying that farmers are essentially ignoring the, the systems, the centralized systems, and taking things into their own hands? Um, yes, largely, yes. Why, why is that? Why, why have they started to do that? Uh, th there are several reasons, but the most important one would be the centralized schemes, as we were saying before, were, were designed with a certain, uh, for the 60s and the 70s when growing adequate food was the main concern. But things have moved beyond that and now the kind of crops that you need to grow are different. And then these schemes, because they have not been commercially viable in the past, have not also been well maintained and kept up. So they are, they are kind of in disrepair all across. Asia or in most places at least, while these uh, individual uh, farms give farmers the flexibility that these centralized schemes do not offer. So with a pump, a farmer gets water on demand whenever he or she wants it. And it enables them to grow a large variety of crops which the centralized systems with a very strict routine of when water comes does not